Okay, let's start homework six. Make sure you're reading the directions. Uh, this one for one and two, they're asking you to solve by factoring and then doing the square root property. So you are not completing the square for this one, um, but it's only for number one and two. I'm gonna go ahead and do two. So they're asking me to do the square root property. I'm sorry, to factor and then do the square root property. So I'm gonna go ahead and so I'm going to start by factoring first. Okay. So what times what gives me 36, but also negative 12. Remember, this should be the same thing. So 6, negative 6 and negative 6. So x minus 6 squared is equal to 80. Now I'm going to go ahead and add that I factored. I'm going to take the square root. Now again, this is not completing the square. This is doing factoring the square root. So now from here, I'm going to be left with x minus 6 is equal to plus or minus. The 80, you need to see if you can break it down um, to be able to simplify that um, radical further. Okay, so now we're going to have, so we get, we get 5 and 16. 16 is a perfect square, so you get 4 square root of 5. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and add 6 to both sides. So you're going to be left with x is equal to 6 plus or minus 4 square root of 5. Because of that square root of 5, you cannot combine them. So then this is your answer. All right. Um, let's move on. Okay, I'm going to do four with you. Now for four, the directions change. Now you're going to do the completing the square. Okay. So for number four, make sure that you set it. They're asking you to set it as x, ax squared plus bx is equal to c. Clearly, this is not in that format. So I need to move my bx. So minus 16x. I'm going to be left with x squared minus 16x is equal to negative 63. I did not move the, 60, the negative 63 because it has to be equal to, to c. Now that I'm there, I'm going to divide everything by my a value. Notice how my a value is 1, so nothing's going to change. Now I'm going to take half of b and square it. And that's going to be 64. That's where we're going to be adding and subtracting. So x squared minus 16x plus 64 is equal to negative 63 plus 64. Now remember, you're going to want to end up with the same thing here. So x minus 8 squared is equal to 1. If you don't get the same thing twice here, because that's x minus 8, x minus 8, because negative 8 times negative 8 times 64 adds up to negative 6. So if you're not getting that, you're doing something wrong. So now x minus 8 is equal to plus or minus 1. Add 8 to both sides. You're left with x is equal to 8 plus or minus 1. But because you can combine these, you're going to be left with two cases, which is x is equal to 9 and x is equal to 7. Yeah, All right, so 9 and 7. So these are your answers. Please make sure to show your work. Okay, let's move on. Um, I'm going to do, I'm trying to think if I should do that one. I'm going to do, let's see, I will do number six, because I think it has fractions, and then I will start you off on eight, because that one also has fractions, so does seven, but I'm not doing all of them. So let's do six, okay, so you have the answer to five, um, which does not give you a fact, I don't think it's going to be fractions. All right, so let's look at number six now. Set it in the form of ax squared plus bx is equal to c. It's already done, but now you have to divide everything by your a. Now your a here is a four. You're not allowed to have anything other than a positive one. So I'm going to be left with x squared plus, we're going to be left with 6x is equal to negative 35 over 4. Okay, um, we weren't able to get rid of that because you cannot simplify it to a nice number. Um, so now let's take a look at this one. All right. Um, from here, we're going to go ahead and take half of B and square it. So that's 9. So x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to 30, negative 35 over 4 plus 9. Um, you guys should be able to factor this on your own. I will help you with the fraction part. So you're going to be left with negative 35 over 4 plus 9 over 1 
get common denominators. You're left with negative 35 over 4 plus, you're going to be left with 36 over 4, which will give you 1 fourth. Okay, so go ahead and figure it out. Keep going from there. Don't forget, you're left with a plus or minus here. Uh, you're going to have to add and subtract those fractions, okay? So I'm not, I'm not going to do that part for you. What I will do is do the next one. All right, so let's move on. All right, for 7 and 8, you're going to have fractions going on. I'm going to do number 8 completely. I started me off on 6. I just left the last fraction part free to do, and it's a matter of adding and subtracting, so that shouldn't be a big deal. Um, I will leave you to 7, and I will do 8, okay? So for number 8, um, let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Set it in the form of ax squared plus bx is equal to c. That's done. Now you need to divide everything by your a. So divide by 5. Whoops, that's our answer. So divide by 5. So I'm left with x squared plus 14 over 5. x is equal to 3 fifths. Now, this is one of those long ones that we were dealing with that has a lot of side work because you're going to take 14 over 5 and divide that by 2. So, let's separate the work. So, 14 over 5 divided by 2 is the same as 14 over 5 times 1 half. So, let's do that. We're left with 14 over 10. Let's simplify this to 7 over 5. Now you're going to square that, so you're going to be left with 49 over 25. That's what we're going to be adding and subtracting. Oops. So x squared plus 14 over 5x plus 49 over 25 is equal to 3 over 5 plus 49 over 25. Okay. So now from here, we have to look at our factors. Okay, what times what? It's going to give me 49 over 25, but also adds up to 14 over 5. So, 49 over 25. Okay, what times what gives me 49? 7 and 7. Remember, they have to be the same thing. 25, 5, and 5. And if you add those up, you get 14 over 5, which is actually what we're looking for. So, 14 over 5. Whoops. 7 over 5, sorry. And you're going to square that because you're going to get the same thing. And then you're left with... Sorry, I'm splitting it up so you guys can see. Then you're left with 3 fifths, 3 fifths plus 49 over 25. You need common denominators. So 15 over 25 plus 49 over 25. Okay, so we're left with 25 at the bottom. We're left with um, 49, 59, 60, 64. So... For the numerator, um, let's see, and then we're going to write that over here. We're going to take the square root for both. This is going to be x plus 7 over 5 is equal to plus or minus 8 over 5. And then we're going to subtract 7 over 5. And because there's no square roots anymore, you're actually going to be able to combine them. So we're going to be left with negative 7 over 5 plus or minus 8 over 5. The good thing is we have common denominators already. So I'm going to do two cases. So negative 7 plus 8, that's going to give me a 1. So 1 fifth. So that's how I get my first answer. The second one is negative 7 over 5 minus 8 fifths. I'm going to add those, um, which will give me, I'll write it off to the side over here, negative 15 over 5. And that's how I get negative 3 as my answer. Okay? So, do these. They have fractions. Okay, let's see what else. And then, I will also do... I'll do 10. Okay? Alright, so for number 10, same thing. Set it equal to... C. Right now, this is not equal to C because, look, it's equal to C, and then that's your B. So I have to move stuff around. So I'm going to be left with 3x squared plus 42x is equal to 3. I have to move this over here and keep the 3 there, okay? So now divide everything by 3. 
we're going to be left with x squared is equal to, whoops, sorry, x squared plus 1, uh, so 14x, yeah, and then is equal to 1. So notice how it started off kind of ugly. Uh, we cleaned it up a little bit, and now we're left with something nicer. So now from here, take half of b and square it, add it to both sides. So plus 49. So we're left with x squared plus, whoops, sorry, not that. Um, you're going to factor now. So 49, what times what gives you 49, but also 14. So x plus 7 squared is equal to 50. Take the square root of both, plus or minus. Um, your 50 here, you're going to have to break it down 2 times 25. 25 is a perfect square. The 2 is not. You're going to subtract 7 from both sides. But remember, you can't subtract them, or combine them, I should say, um, because it has a square root. So then that means you're done. That would be your answer, which matches what I had. Okay. Alright, the last one that I will do, because I think there's only 12 problems, yeah. So the last one that I'll do is going to be, um, let's do 12, because it has a lot more. Alright, so set it in the form of ax squared plus bx is equal to c. So right now, there's two c's. That's your a, that's your b, that's your c, that's your c. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract this. Left with 2x squared minus 20x is equal to... We're going to go ahead and add these because they are both negative. I'm going to be left with negative 176. And you have to keep it negative. Now we're going to divide everything by 2. Okay. So, whoops. Give me one second. So in order, the reason we're trying to divide is because your A is, is greater or is different than just 1. So x squared minus 10x is equal to negative 88. Now from there, we're going to go ahead and take half of b, square it, and then we're going to add that to both sides. Now remember, it's always going to be the same thing. What times what gives me 25, but also negative 10? So it's going to be x minus 5 squared, because we have two of them. Um, and just as a reminder, this is why I keep doing that. See how they're both the same thing? That's why I just rewrite it as this. Because I'm going to have to square root it anyways. And then we're going to go ahead and be left with negative 88 plus 25, which means you're going to subtract it. So we're going to be left with negative 63. You're going to take the square root. Plus or minus. Remember that the... Whoops. When you have something like that, it's the same as um, you have your i and the square root of 63. And then you're going to break that one down. Okay, so you're going to figure out what times what gives me 63. Perfect square, 7 and 9. So this is going to be 3i square root of 7. Now you're going to add 5 to both sides. Again, because you have that square root in the way, you can't combine the 5 and the 3. So then this is your answer. Alright, go ahead and do the rest of these. I did a nice number of, of these for your homework, also because they had some fractions. Um, get those done.